Welcome in to the Fun Astrology Podcast. It's Tuesday, November 9th. Thomas Miller, thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at the chart real quick, and then we're going to get to your questions. We've got some time this week because basically we're just chasing the moon around the chart this week. So I thought we'd take a few seconds here and just look at where the players are so that you'd know what energies are with us this week. And the big one that I'm seeing a lot of people talking about even online now is Venus in Capricorn. Of course, that was part of what we talked about yesterday and the yod that it was in over the weekend. That yod is gone now. It is all broken up on all corners except the sextile. But uh, Mercury and Venus were in a sextile and then and then Quincunx is up to the yod with the north node. But uh, Venus is going to be in Capricorn for a while because of a retrograde. It uh, officially will be in there until the wee hours of the morning on March 6th. Yes, March 6th. So those themes that we talked about yesterday are very much in play and will be part of this Venus transiting this long transit through Capricorn. Lots of really digging in and, and establishing these foundational areas around money and our relationships. We'll talk about this more as it unfolds. We've got plenty of time to unpack that, but that is one big dynamic. The other one that uh, I think is of note right now is the stellium in Scorpio, Mercury, Mars, the sun. I think another thing that we should note is that they are in a square to Saturn in Aquarius. So we've got a little Scorpio uh, Aquarius tension going, Mars and Mercury squaring Saturn. The other big one that I think we should keep our eye on is the forming re-square, square number three, between Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus, which is in retrograde and will be when the exact square hits. But we're now in the target zone. We're within five degrees. Saturn is at seven degrees Aquarius. Uranus is at 12 degrees Taurus. Then if we just threw two more logs on the fire, Neptune at home in Pisces and Pluto plodding along through Capricorn, there's your chart, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the way it will be all week. Hello, Thomas Miller. My name is Valerie, and I would just like to say thank you so much for pouring your time and your energy into this podcast. I thought the topic of oppositions within the zodiac signs would be enlightening to dive into. For example, my partner's wheel is the exact opposite of mine. His north node is my south node. My south node is his north node. My first house is Gemini. His first house is Sagittarius. So I thought this would be really fun to dive into and just explore how we can expand into the opposite within relationships. Thanks so much. Thank you, Valerie, and thanks for the kind words. And you are on to one of the key astrological concepts that when you understand and you get the power of the other side of the chart, then the world of astrology starts to open up. I truly believe that astrology is built primarily on oppositions. I'm not going to personalize this too much, but my chart is throughout the 101 course. If you want to see my chart, it's all through. The, oh, by the way, by the way, we are doing kind of a last call for those of you who would like to participate in our first video and audio chat conversation that we're going to be doing this week. If you're in the course, you're going to get emails on that and it will be in the Discord channel. But we're going to be doing that this week. So Brittany's pulling all that together. You'll get that information probably today. And um, if you'd like to join that, then hop on in the course and you can participate in that with us. It's just going to be an open conversation. So I've got this stack of planets in Scorpio. And when I finally realized that when you run out of answers in Scorpio, look at Taurus, which is on the opposite side of the chart. What she's talking about here is a relationship overlay. And remember, I've, I've talked about when you attract the opposite sign from your natal sun sign. I've seen this a lot where it will either be this attraction as two magnets just snapping together, or it will be this get the away from me kind of thing with two magnets pushing apart. There just won't be any symmetry or synergy there, and the two sides will just push away. Now, I do think that there's something to think about or look into or explore in your own journey that as she's talking about, for example, Gemini Sagittarius, that 
we probably brought in areas of the sign opposite our sun sign. In fact, there's a chart called a draconic chart. Astrometrics has it. And the draconic chart is supposedly kind of the structure of what you came in with spiritually that you brought with you. And I know in my draconic chart, the sun is in Taurus, which is the opposite sign of my sun sign. I don't know that to be true. I'm not proficient with that chart, but it is an interesting concept that maybe what we were before might have been on the opposite side of the chart. Some people I've heard also say that maybe our nodes, either either our south node or our north node, are what we might have been before. I don't know on these things, and of course nobody does, but it is interesting speculation. However, the opposite side of the chart is a treasure trove of information that we really do need to study and be aware of. In partnerships, like she's talking about specifically, relationships are the platform where we really kind of hammer out karmic business. So if you're in a relationship, you are doing that kind of work. (laughs) There's just no doubt about it. Things are going to come up, right? And I think how you interact with them is like if this relationship is working well and you complement each other, that's great. If you're constantly pushing against each other, then that opposite side of the magnet is what is activated in that particular relationship. Can you turn it around is the question. Absolutely. And of course, that's where the work begins too. So it's very important to study the opposite side of your chart. In fact, I've kind of looked at it where I've turned my chart completely around and then read everything in that from that perspective. That's an interesting thing to do. Oh, so know your partner, know them well, and know the opposite side of that chart. And maybe you're helping them resolve some issues that are to them kind of backwards. To you, you just see it straightforward. Great concept. Thanks, Valerie. Appreciate a great question. You guys have a good one. More questions to come. And if you'd like to leave one, hit me on SpeakPipe on the website, funastrology.com. <laughs>